Alrighty, folks, we have the one and only, and yes, she's even flexible on her time. We normally talk on Wednesdays, but now we're talking on Friday because I was driving to Vegas on Wednesday. Thank you so much for coming on. How you doing? I'm doing great. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. Thank you for doing this. I don't normally record on Friday, but everybody loves to hear from you each week. So uh, thank you for being so flexible. Thank you. I love reading all of your comments. I don't always get time to reply to them, but I appreciate you, you know, sending comments and I reply as I can for sure. Absolutely. Well, one of the things that I've shared with folks the last couple of days is I think August housing market is going to be very slow. And now I am referring to existing home sales so we can get that out of the way. Yeah, uh, I think transactions could very likely hit a new cycle low. I think a lot of this is because the buyers have learned that 7%, you know, just wait, right? Rates went up to seven, came down, went up to seven, came down. I think buyers are conditioned to, hey, I got a seven handle. I'm not buying. I'll wait. And yes. so I think it's going to get really slow. I'll stop there and see if you agree, disagree, what's going on. And then, then I, then I want to talk about the silver lining because I think there's a huge silver lining. But let's just acknowledge where we are. Do you think it's going to get slow in the second half? Absolutely. I mean, today, the last time I checked this morning, uh, the 30-year fixed for prime owner-occupant was 7.14%. It's the highest in a really long time. I think yeah. I think I read 22 years, but I don't remember for sure. So, um, you know, very, very high for our recent memory. And mm -hmm. most people, if you think about psychology, they only can think back about 10 years. Anything that was before that was so far before that they're kind of conditioned that the norm is what they've seen in the last 10 years. So when we've seen a norm of, you know, three to 5% interest rates, and now you're at seven, even though it's not historic highs, it feels that way to most right. people. And so most people are sitting on the sidelines. And if you're an investor, you can't get deals to cash flow in most markets if you're paying retail at at you know 7.14% if you're an investor add 2% to that so you know yeah. 8 eight and a half, nine easily um, maybe even higher for for investors and so that slows the demand but at the same time Michael we've talked about this and maybe it's worth talking about more today we have record low supply because yeah. we have this history of these same sellers saying why would I sell and have to take on a new mortgage at higher prices and more than double what most people's interest rates are locked in at? And so record low supply, including record low foreclosures. There are less delinquencies today. I read this this morning than since 1979 on primary mortgage wow. owners. Like I was back to the five 70s. years old 70s. then, right? And so, um, it, you know, even those that are behind 90 days is only, it's less than 2% and the lowest in I think 27 years. So people are not having to move, people are making their mortgage payments and they're not gonna sell. When you have limited supply, it keeps transactions really slow and it actually keeps prices high unless you're in a market where where there's more supply than there is demand. So I agree with you. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think one I think, of the I things think... that we'll come back to that into this time is, you know, I always said the Fed broke housing. And most people, when they hear me say that, they always go to demand because that's the easiest thing for somebody to understand, right? High rates, low affordability. Makes sense. I don't think people caught on until very recently that when I said the Fed broke housing, it really had to do with supply. Yes. The, the, the housing market has historically been Entry level buyers, first time buyers, move up buyers, then luxury, right? And there, there are you know second homes and all of that stuff. But generally speaking, that was the flow for a hundred years. We simply came in for a couple of years. We took rates so low, we not only had purchases sub three percent, we had refis below three percent, and now people mm -hmm. are stuck. So what what happened? We basically took out the move up buyer, which is two transactions, but it's also supply for the entry level. So um, people don't realize 7% rates damages supply as much as demand. And I think a lot of people miss that. Right. And I would venture to say, I think the Fed missed it too, to be honest with you, because early on, and I've been reading, you know, like you, all of the, the Fed minutes after, you know, Powell's announcements, but Powell has come out and talked about um, early on that housing was unaffordable and they needed to kind of fix that 
with raising interest rates, that if they raised interest rates, they thought maybe values would fall. But values are not going to fall when supply is constrained because of the rise in interest rate. And I think they were so focused on the demand side, thinking that would bring values down, when really, I don't think that they really thought about the fact that most people, unless there's a recession that forces moves, like mass deep recession, unless it forces people to relocate, most people, because of the rise in interest rates, are saying, hold it. There's no way I'm selling. I can't even downsize my house at higher okay. interest rates. So based on what I read they were trying to do, which was bring housing values back in line with you know norms, I mm -hmm. think they failed on this. And I think that that has caused more slow transactions, to your point. Yeah, one of the things you learn in economics was, which was my undergrad degree, is there's these supply and demand curves, and yes. I agree with you. I, I can't speak to the Fed, but I can definitely speak to the talking heads that I see all over the media. They all missed that we, the uh, transaction curve did not stay at six million, which is where supply and demand met. It it was lower to four million. So, just think about taking forty percent of the transactions off. Yeah, you don't prices don't have to move. Right. You, you take right. two million transactions out. You know, there's a lot of cash buyers, a lot of this, a lot of that. Uh, prices wasn't going to be impacted. And thankfully, I called that 16 months ago. Uh, so hopefully if right. you listened, you, you took action. But the and other what thing it's done is it's actually made housing less affordable. So it's oh, yeah. causing, you know, a, a bigger <laughs> Record problem low. with affordability than what they were trying. Unless, again, you're in a couple of these boom and bust markets. And there are markets that we've talked about on the show as well. Those that boom the fastest tend to bust the fastest. And you do see, you know, decline in values in some of our you know, favorite cities to pick on like um, Dallas, Phoenix, Las Vegas, um, Los Angeles, Seattle, you know, some of those prices are really coming down in those markets. Um, but it's because price prices got so high. And I think because they're upper end homes, and there's fewer upper end buyers that are going to pay those rates, those higher end homes start to come down if you have a motivated seller. But most of the country it, at most, you're dropping sales prices about 2% nationally, but many cities are actually, home prices are continuing to rise year over year and quarter over quarter. Yeah. Yeah. I think Lance uh, put out an article. It might've been from Redfin, might've been Zillow. 60% of the 200 largest markets are at record highs. Record highs. We're not talking higher than last month or last year. Record highs. 60%. Right. Uh, you know, but that is coming off the spring selling season. We'll see what happens in the second half. But let's get to the silver lining, right? I like acknowledging we're going to go through some pain. If you're paid on transactions, it's going to be hard. Watch your spend, all of that stuff. But Anna, you and I have been doing this combined 40 years. I don't know about you, but I'm willing to say the best time for me to get a deal done is when I can find a motivated seller. Yes. Those are my best deals. And Absolutely. If, I'm, if I'm right about a slower market, the dis, you know, I will be able to find motivated sellers easier. It's never easy, but it right. will be easier. Is that fair? Absolutely. And one thing that I'm doing, you know, we've talked a lot about as well as I've primarily shifted from being a residential investor to a commercial investor, still residential, but on a larger scale and larger multifamily. And because of the pain in, in commercial real estate, um, and I see a lot of opportunity, but they're still not at the prices that, you know, make sense for the risk. And so I've actually shifted a little bit and started looking at smaller properties again over the last several months. And so, you know, I'm doing searches and this is something maybe some of you don't know, but if you go out to most of your MLS sites like realtor.com or you work with a realtor and ask them to um, send you listings that have keywords, you can search for certain keywords. So I'm searching for the keyword motivated. I'm searching for the key wrote, keyword assumable assumption, finance, seller finance, financing. If you can kind of type in those words or um, low fixed mortgage, you can do a search for those keywords. And that tends to tell you that the seller's motivated enough. They're letting you know you could take over their payments um, or they're, they're motivated for some other reason. And those, if you can look at those listings and see those that have been on the market a while, while they're showing these things, those are great opportunities for you to come in and either get a great price 
take over their mortgage, you know, through an assumption. A lot of agency loans people don't realize are actually assumable still. So if they have an FHA, a VA, um, a USDA mortgage, a lot of times you can assume those at the current payments, or you can do something like a subject to very carefully working with an attorney, making sure you're doing it the right way to protect yourself. But I think that there's huge opportunities because when most investors leave the market because cash flows don't make sense for most deals today with high interest rates and high prices, you now become one of the only options for many sellers that are motivated and need to sell. So I'm excited about the opportunity. Um, I've made a couple of offers using creative financing, um, using subject to, using installment sales. I haven't gotten any of them done in the last couple of weeks because of the seller situations. But definitely this is a time to like hone in on your buy box, really get good sharpening your pencil, only doing great deals, but search for those motivated sellers and, and you're bound to find more and more over the next several months than you have over the last year. Oh, with, without question. I think the next five to seven months, uh, time is a great pressure, right? As times go by, it's 30 days on market, it's 45 days on market. You know, on my channel, I've talked about writing disrespectful offers. I hope people are hearing me when they hear me say that they always think price. And again, I've given them examples, you know, a one eight one point eight million dollar property selling for one one. So maybe it's some of that's my examples. But when they're motivated and they're in a position to say yes, meaning they have equity, you might be able to pay their price and get amazing terms. Right. You know, and, and again, if you're going to hold a property long term, the terms are more valuable than some price. Uh, Absolutely. Absolutely. And and I have some of my best deals over the last couple of years because it was a high price market, an increasing price market with a lot of demand as well. I paid retail, but I negotiated the terms such that I had incredible rates of return, you know, at least 15 to 20 percent on any deal that I did or I wasn't going to do it. And usually that was by putting, you know, negotiating lower LTVs, less money down um, or a really low interest only mortgage rate. And so, you know, getting a really low principal and interest rate on a residential house that you want to keep as a rental property that's somewhere between, you know, two and a half and four percent can help you have incredible cash flow, even if you pay real t re retail today. Exactly. So at the end of the day, folks, I hope you're excited. Uh, if you are a follower of One Rinse Light Our Time or what Anna teaches, and uh, this is our time. We've been waiting, right? 2020, 2021, crazy demand. Motivated sellers existed then. They were just impossible to find. So again, the opportunities in front of us, but you have to do the work. You have to get ready. You don't just wake up one day and understand how to react, you know, put deals together. Uh, so on, if somebody wanted to reach out or follow you, how would they do that? Great. You can find me here on your channel. You can find me on social media at Anna Kelly, REI Mom. And for coaching and consulting or help even with deal review, you can find me at REIMom.com. Awesome. Thank you so much.